Um, I, I think they're defending the uh, uh, program that the president has announced. Um, and I think the question at the end was very interesting. If you have the $900 billion coming, then why do you need the $1.9 trillion? Uh, and I thought Brian Deese had a pretty good answer. He said, we've, we've addressed issues that have not been addressed. I think these SNAP programs and issues of raising the amount that's going to people out there who are already receiving aid is very interesting. I was looking at some of the hunger data that Brian Deese mentioned, and people who are receiving uh, SNAP right now or, or um, uh, food stamps, so to speak, um, they're hungry right now. People who are working are hungry right now, which kind of argues for the minimum wage. There's new data, uh, weekly data on hunger, and it's something like 14 or 15 percent of Americans right now um, are reporting insufficient food. Hey, Kayla, curious what you think the agriculture industry is going to be saying on a day like today, but also all of the companies that contract with the U.S. government uh, based on what we've just heard around contractors uh, and the minimum wage going to $15. Well, I think it was interesting when Deese was asked specifically about just how many contractors are or are not making minimum wage, and they didn't have a number to actually put behind that. And then the other question about if there are 8 million Americans who qualified for but have not received their stimulus checks, how do you find them? And he acknowledged that it's going to be extremely difficult to do so. So while these executive orders uh, try to address sort of a, a miscellany of issues that are still plaguing the country, uh, it's hard to see exactly what what the dollar benefit in a tangible way is and how quickly some of these things can actually get announced. I agree with Steve. I thought the newsiest part of that was when he was asked about how he will respond to Republicans who say, we just did $900 billion of stimulus. Why do we need more? And he summarized the administration's argument by saying what we did previously was retroactive. The package that President Biden has announced is proactive. And that seems to be a preview of what he has planned to say to this bipartisan group of senators that he's expected to have a phone call with on Sunday. That's going to be eight Republicans, eight Democrats making up this bipartisan coalition of sorts. Where he's going to try to get them on board, but the administration has been pretty for right in saying it's not the final package. They want to hear from both sides of the aisle what they should cut, what they should keep. But that seemed to be the administration's argument. This is proactive. What you did before was reactive. Kayla, the other question I was going to ask is, what do you think the Republican reaction is going to be to some of the worker protections that they're trying to put in place uh, in terms of unemployment uh, insurance and the like? And the reason I ask is we've had a, a debate, raging debate about liability protection, for example, for a long time for businesses. And then there's an argument that you've heard people taking advantage uh, of, cert uh, of certain of these things. Well, I think it's definitely going to be a point of contention. And it was something that came up in March when one of those early COVID relief packages did address paid sick leave. They uh, believed that if people were sick or were exposed, they should be paid not to show up to work. But then as the pandemic went on and on and businesses started opening, they realized that they actually couldn't function without some of these workers if they were quarantining for the long term or if they were not willing to come into work for some time. So certainly this is something that Biden has addressed on the campaign trail during the course of this debate over the last several months. So it shouldn't be a surprise that the White House tried to put some of those protections in place. But how the the, the right side of the aisle response to that, uh, I think, is also going to be predictable. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.